Pruning can be one of the most important things you do for the long-term health of a tree. It can improve aesthetics, ensure the structural integrity of a tree, help prevent low-hanging branches, maintain the size of a tree, and improve the tree's overall ability to sustain itself. It's important to remember, first, no two trees are alike, so each tree will require an individualized pruning plan. Second, each cut you make creates a wound, so it is important that you make your cuts in the right place and have a specific reason for each cut. Third, if you are unsure of where or how to prune a tree, or if you cannot safely make your pruning cuts while standing on the ground, consult a licensed arborist. Fourth and finally, never prune all the branches across the top of the tree's crown. This will severely inhibit the tree's ability to grow upward and can lead to structural failure, which is a major risk to people and property. During this video, we will show you when to prune, where to prune on the tree, and how to prune. Many people ask when is the best time to prune in a tree's life. There are two broad approaches. Hygienic or remedial pruning is the removal of dead, diseased, or broken branches. This can be done at any point in a tree's life. Structural pruning is the removal of living branches in order to promote a healthy crown and strong limbs. Structural pruning requires a careful consideration for the typical growth patterns of the species of the tree you wish to prune. For this type of pruning, consider calling an expert such as an arborist who can help you evaluate, select, and prune those branches that will positively impact the long-term growth of the tree. It is best to make major structural pruning cuts when the tree is young, since smaller cuts are easier to seal. However, to minimize transplant shock for a newly planted tree, wait two or three years after planting to give the tree time to get established. The best time of the year to prune living limbs depends on the climate where you live. In general, it is best to prune toward the end of the dormant season prior to the onset of growth in the springtime or during the fall prior to leaf fall. Regardless of when you prune, always remember to prune less than 25% of a tree's branches during any one season. The resulting loss of leaves will severely limit a tree's ability to sustain itself through photosynthesis. Before we start our work today, we'll want to gather up our tools and equipment. Make sure that these tools are sharp as well as clean. After you use these tools, carefully wipe them off with rubbing alcohol to reduce the risk of cross-contamination. Since you are using sharp objects, it is also important to protect your own personal safety by wearing proper personal protective equipment. There are a few parts of a tree structure that you should pay particular attention to when evaluating your tree's pruning needs. The branch collar is the telescoping ring around the base of a branch where it meets the trunk. It is comprised of tissue that can harden and seal over any pruning cuts, minimizing the tree's exposure to pests and pathogens. The branch collar must remain intact after a pruning cut in order for a tree to heal properly. The branch bark ridge is the place where the branch attaches to the trunk of the tree. When the bark comes together to form an actual ridge, you know that the branch is strongly attached to the trunk. Included bark is a condition in which a branch is weakly attached to the trunk. Over time, you may need to prune the branch to avoid damage to the tree or a possible safety hazard. The four main types of branches on trees are scaffold branches, lateral branches, suckers, and water sprouts. Scaffold branches emerge from the trunk of the tree and form the main structure of the crown. These branches should be joined to the trunk at wide angles, as appropriate for the tree's species, to ensure that they form strong attachments. Also, these branches should not cross as they may constrict the growth of other branches. When the tree is young, carefully choose and prune crossing branches to enable unobstructed branch growth. Lateral branches grow from the structural branches. They provide shape to the crown and typically hold the tree's leaves. Suckers and water sprouts are two types of branches that form when the tree is under stress or improperly pruned. Suckers are branches that grow from dormant buds. These are often found closer to the base of the tree. Water sprouts are branches that grow upward at almost 90 degree angles from either a scaffold or lateral branch. Suckers and water sprouts should be pruned when possible. Now that you understand the important elements of tree structure, let's take a look at where to make pruning cuts on the tree. 
When pruning smaller branches and twigs, cut back to the supporting branch or the closest bud. Prune dead twigs back to the nearest living tissue and dead branches back to either living tissue or the nearest lateral or scaffold branch. When removing larger living limbs, make your cuts as close to the branch collar as possible at the same angle of the collar. Here, we are pruning a tree where the branch collar is prominent. Do not make your cut past the branch collar. This is called a flush cut or too far past the branch collar leaving a stump, sometimes called a hat rack. In both cases, the tree's wound response mechanism is diminished, resulting in risk of pest, pathogens, and decay. In cases when the branch collar is not prominent, here's a helpful way to figure out where to cut. First, find the place where the top of the branch meets the trunk and draw an imaginary line straight down to the bottom of the branch. This will be your axis line. We'll call this line A. Next, imagine a line parallel to the top of the branch that extends into the trunk of the tree, crossing your axis line. We'll call this line B. Take line B and flip it over line A, creating line C. Ultimately, the angle formed between A and B will be approximately the same angle formed between A and C. A safe way to prune for both the tree and you is by using the three cut method. First, using a sharp cutting tool, make an undercut about one to two feet from where we will make our final cut. Start from the bottom of the branch and cut about halfway into the branch. Next, make your second cut about two inches beyond your first. Cut all the way through the branch until it is completely detached from the rest of the branch. Finally, carefully make your cut along the branch collar or the angle you have predetermined. Once the cut is made, allow the tree to form a seal naturally by remaining exposed to the air. We've talked about the basics of a tree's branching structure, when and where cuts should be made, and a simple three-step method for pruning larger limbs. By following these guidelines, you are on your way to ensuring your tree will grow well for generations to come.